Welcome to Power Word Fail, a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition actual play podcast. My name is Carlos and I am the dungeon master for these lovely group of heroes. But enough about me, let's get to the real stars of the podcast, starting with Austin. Ferric, a kiln at the edge of loss. Andy. Pickles, the, an agreement that the master is our only salvation. <laughs> Katie. <laughs> Dolly Rowan, in a much bigger city than she comes from. Nathan. Mirage, who misspoke. <laughs> and last but not least, Young Money, am Ian. <laughs> <laughs> home sweet home, Emperor Zusa. And once again, my name is Carlos, and I am the Dungeon Master for this Campaign 1, uh, Chosen of the Crystal Crown, and we are on episode 24 which is one away from 25. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Which is halfway to 50 and halfway <laughs> to 100, and that's mm-hmm. that's success. Is 100 yeah, that's episodes, it. Right? That's how we know. The success is the friends we made along the way. But <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Success, these... Never mind. <laughs> that's my Without... personality for my other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, without further ado... Let's get right to it. Last time on Power Word Fail, the party had finally arrived in the city of Mornstead in hopes of leveraging Ambrose's family connections to raise forces to fight back against Zeos. Upon arriving in the city, you were immediately almost pickpocketed by a pair of halfling urchins, Gert and Nicknack, who told you about some interesting spots to visit in the city and let Pickles know she could find a cool glass of water at the Black Rose Tavern. You did some shopping, and eventually made your way to the shop of Vilvanus, an eccentric tiefling adventurer turned merchant, who Marcus told you to seek out. He told you about some interesting stories about the history of Telthar, and gave each of you a valuable gift. After visiting for a while, you left his store and made your way towards the Black Rose Tavern. And as you arrived, you encountered a white road man in the street shouting about converting to the way of the master. And that's what we'll pick back up. So, the scene is set before you. There is this elderly, white robed man with about 50 or so people huddled near around him. He's shouting, the way of the master. We must all follow the way of the master. The dragons are here, the end is nigh. We must, or we will all surely perish. Oh, we will all surely perish. Awake! Awake and be saved! As he continues to spout his cravings and ravings, you see the people slowly nod, and they kind of look at each other. Some shake their heads in disagreeance, as you see some turn to each other and say, You know, he makes kind of sense. He does make kind of sense. Uh, what do you do? Do you do anything? Ambrose, are, are you aware of this master that he speaks of? From your time in the church? Uh, DM, but I know who this master is. Uh, you can make a history check. Of course. <laughs> Fifteen. Oh, oh, pickles. I, I huh? love clowns. He does kind of look like a clown. That makes me like him a lot less, though. <laughs> Shit. Huh. You would know, uh, with a fifteen you rolled, uh, you would know that the way of the master is the uh, main religion of the newly formed concurrent theocracy which lies in the east of Malindor. It is not a very old regime. It's only less than 50 years old. Uh, and the way of the master is the central religion for that part of Malindor. Uh, the concurrent theocracy you also know was once part of the kingdom of Mornstead. And it's not exactly kosher to be talking about the way of the master in the capital city or anywhere. So as that continues on, the loud ravings, you do get a sense that some people become uneasy as they know that this is illegal. Uh, Adalia is visibly uneasy and she kind of goes over to Ambrose. Is he not going to be arrested? Oh, he will Where, be. Guys, uh, let's uh, go. But, but I wanted to hear the end of the story. Not that different from Northwatch. Guys, he you do not want to be near their ivory guard. Jokes. Oh, he does dokes? Oh, we gotta stay. It's like a whole show. He's not even juggling. This is the worst clown that I've ever seen. 
No, he's one of those doomsday yellers. Guys, we gotta go. We do not want any attention. Adalia is already gone. She is, like, lost in the crowds. I mouth the words to uh, Pickle's dragon, but don't say it. Uh, Wagon? What? (laughs) (laughs) Where did we leave the wagon? (laughs) Uh, Ambrose is right. We should should move on. Uh, All right. Let's go find the wagon. Ferric, you're right. He's not a very good clown. No jokes or anything. Let's let's go. Yeah, Ferric Ferric has lost interest and has headed into the inn. As you approach the Black Rose Inn, you see that it is a single-story stone-walled building with several uh, painted glass windows, almost reminiscent of a church somewhat. Uh, These glass windows are uniquely stained, and on many of them they have the Black Rose of probably the aforementioned theme of the inn in honor. And as you walk in with the door creaking open, you see a very modest but relatively busy inn. Uh, you see that there are many different accommodations in terms of like there's a bar, there are many tables, you see servers moving in and out of the way. Many human, uh, many dwarves, many elves, there's a good mixture of races of course, but primarily human. As you walk through you see the slick stone floors and you also see that there is a hallway that goes Presumably the rooms, but there doesn't seem to be that many rooms. And you would see that and you would probably get the fact this is more of a drinking hub than a place to stay. Uh, At least from the outset, that's what you can see. You see that there is the barkeep behind. She is a tall, uh, red-skinned elf. Uh, Anyone who wants to can make a history check for me real quick as well. I'll do it. Get some cool deets. A six for Maraz. A six for Ambrose. Eleven. Uh, Fifteen from Farrick. And eight for Pickles. Jeez, okay. Let's get those out of the way early. Uh, everyone who rolled above ten, you would know that from looking at this elf, you would know that, that she is a sanguine elf. A special race of elves who came from a meteor and a comet that dropped from the sky many years ago, thousands of years ago, uh, and they are a good people, but uh, very interesting to see one in the middle of Mornstead. So you see that one behind the bar, you see people banding about. What would you like to do first? Um, out of character, or not out of character, but before we get into this, have I seen any other Crystalborn since we got here? No, you have not actually. Just like in the crowds? Just from your memory, uh, you have not. Um, Crystalborn are not people that can... Well, I mean, at least you haven't seen it. You can formally identify uh, as Crystalborn. Mm-hmm. They may be hiding, but from even the outset... Even with a passive no. perception of 23? Uh, even with a passive perception of 23, uh, okay. you have not seen any Crystalborn uh, as okay. of yet. Got it. Thank you. Um, Adalia is very shaken from that encounter with the person in the uh, street. You okay, Adalia? Um... I have seen people stoned in the street for far less. When will the guards take them away? Depends on when the guards come. Are we are we safe in here? I scan around to see if there's any weird people, suspicious looking people. Maraz is standing right next to you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm folks. Uh, <laughs> Other than Maraz, I think we're good. Ah, haha, I see what you did there. Go ahead and make me a perception check. Okay. That is an 18. Uh, in terms of suspicious people, no. You don't see anyone other than, you know, weary adventurers. You see some townsfolk here. Uh, these are more of the traveling sort. Uh, really non-conspicuous people uh, in this tavern. Uh, you see a couple of the patrons. They seem to be having a arm wrestling contest, and people are betting as the loud, joyous romps. Uh, fills your ears, and you also see just various different denizens at the table laughing, smiling, having a good time with it all. I turn my head uh, slightly to Adalia. You're fine here. By the way, did Northwatch even have any beer? Northwatch didn't have much of anything. Then I'll buy you a drink. <sighs> that would be nice. Uh, I'll buy rounds for the t- for the whole group. Oh, thank you, Ambrose. What time of day is it? It's like uh, evening, right? Hey, that's my man. 
<laughs> what time of day is it? Real quick, I yeah. heard that. Uh, it is barely past, you know, two o'clock. It's high afternoon here. Okay, okay, so we wouldn't necessarily bunk down yet. No, no, no. Now, I know Vilvon has mentioned this place, but uh, so did the twins, purport, the purported twins that tried to rob us, right? Uh, Pickles, you spoke with him? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, it was something about a cool glass of water. I remember. <laughs> Pickles just starts to walk towards the bar <laughs> and just <laughs> ignores this conversation altogether. <laughs> <laughs> Adalia's gonna try to find a table where she can keep her back to the wall and her eyes on the exit. I mean, Pickles is just getting some alcohol, but... Okay. You approach the bar, the sanguine elf turns to you and says, Why, hello. And how can I help you? Pickles is just gonna point back towards Ambrose and be like, He's buying us all beer. Oh. Thank you. How kind of him. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Monet, and you can use me for anything you need. Drinks, we have food, um, lodging is sparse right now, but we can possibly accommodate in stables of some sort. Uh, is there anything else I can get you? I mean, probably. I don't remember who sent us. I didn't pay much attention. Uh, also, I, I could really use a really cool drink of water. I was told I could get that here. Hmm. She bends over the sanguine skin, almost glistens in the night as her features, uh, her orange eyes look straight at you. Uh, now, why would someone be wanting a cool glass of water? Interesting. I suppose I could offer you a cool glass of water, but I would need to be know who would be asking and for what reason. Just tell... Whoever's back there, you know, pouring the water, that Pickles is here, and she's just checking in, and she's really thirsty, and she's probably gonna die if she doesn't get a drink pretty soon. Also, can I have that beer? Why, of course. And she'll go and she'll pour beer. She'll uh, put it out, and then she'll seize the rest of the crew and pour four more and hand it uh, to you and uh, sew up a little tray plops it towards you and says, here's your beer. When you're done with that, you can uh, let me know when you're ready to get that cool glass of water. Can I bring friends or do I gotta go by myself? Hmm, that depends. Bringing friends is such a dangerous proposition. I know, but I like them. Let's hope you do. Yes, you may bring friends. I will let the water bearers let them know you're coming. Okay. And she'll flip her hair and she'll walk towards where there's like sort of a curtain like draped up hanging from the wall. She'll walk back in and then one of the uh, human uh, servers will kind of take up behind the bar in her place. So you have the beer uh, and you have it now and assuming you bring it back to your friends. Oh yeah, she and me, as soon as, as soon as she said Okay, Pickles immediately just took all the beers and walked away. <laughs> she didn't. She didn't wait. All right, hey guys, I got the beer. Ian, or uh, Ambrose, you're paying. Fucking Pickles with fucking five, five beers, beers in her hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, I'll go Thank up you, and Pickles. give a coin to um, Pickles so she can pay them. She just puts it in her pocket. <laughs> Incredible. I say, thanks, Ambrose. That's really nice of you. Yeah, anytime. So they said that we could stay here, but it'll probably be in a barn, so we might not want to stay here. I don't know. I forgot the person who sent us, so I didn't say his name because I don't know it. Um, so one of you might be better off handling that. Uh, also, we're probably going to meet my family in a little bit, so that'll be fun. Your family's in Morshead? Yes. We, we discussed this on the road. <laughs> You look at Farrick, whose face is that of a barn owl, and Farrick says, What's wrong with sleeping in the barn? <laughs> I've slept in many barns. They've always been quite comfortable. I mean, we could sleep in the barn, but like, I would kind of like a bed. We've been sleeping on the ground for so long. Or in trees. The, the trees are kind of nice. I don't mind sleeping in a barn, and I'm glad, Farrick, that you uh, 
think that that's fine. I, I was going to make a comment about your face as a barn owl and thought that might be insensitive, and especially given that I don't know when to stop talking. I wasn't sure if that would be a Brass, good idea right talking. now or not. About right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow. Making generalizations. <laughs> Maraz drinks this beer. Like, we just. Yeah, Maraz will, like, it. slouch down and, like, kind of shrink into his coat and just drink his beer. Uh, Adalia has her cloak up and is still looking semi terrified to be here after the religious display in the street. But she takes the beer and clearly has never had beer before. Do you sh- shoot it? Like. Oh, heavens, like, no. Like, back yeah. of no, 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 no. No, no, no. No, no. Please do. Here, take. Fer- Ferric will like scoop their beer up uh, <laughs> in their hands. Be like, you want to drink it in smaller sips so that it lasts you longer because it's a big drink. You don't want to chug it. Otherwise, you'll burp really, really loud. Um, yeah, just let's. Do you want to cheers? Cheers. Yes, cheers. It also yeah. grows on you, Adolia. Give it another try if you don't like it. Why do we could do shots? It's, it's absolutely terrible, but uh, <laughs> after this, I I swear if they have a mulberry mead here, you will be oh. trying that next, because that is much better than beer. All I've ever had is things that have been fermented in basements and that sort of thing. The beer seems lovely. Oh, that's fun too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cheers to... to Spunk? To Spunk. To Evangeline. To Evangeline! To Spunk. To Evangeline. Yeah. Cheers, and Adalia sips the beer. Oh. I chug this one. <laughs> Pickles chugs her too. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of mixed signals about how this drink is best enjoyed. That's the nice part. You can do oh. it any way you want. We're meeting my family. This. I need more than one. <gasps> Your family? I'm back with you. I toss another gold to Pickles. Give me another one, please. Are they... Are they I'm here? not your and... servant. Go get it yourself. Well, I was gonna Adalia buy cheese too with it. Oh, I need another it. beer. <laughs> no, I totally go up and get the beer just for myself this time. <laughs> I guess you don't need a beer. Fuck you then. I guess. Oh, the waitress no. walks away. Oh. Whoa, she has a great change of personality out of nowhere. <laughs> out of this is the waitress, not the bar bartender. That's yeah, the waitress. It's, it's the oh, oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, there's so much. So much here. It's extraordinary, isn't it? You can just That's walk right. up to the bar and order whatever you like, and there's all these people here laughing. Is this how all cities are? Kinda, yeah, kinda. Most of the time. North Watch was really shitty. Like, it's like, oh, anything I'm, is probably better. Like, I everything. am extremely aware. Uh, and Adalia's just gonna sip her beer and, like, watch the world go by. Well, hopefully, we can do something about it. Wait, um, Pickles, did you say your family is here? And she's like looking yeah. around for goblins. Um, are, are they here in kind of the in the oh, tavern? Maybe. We're gonna find out. I don't really know what's gonna happen. Uh, just giving you a heads up. We might all just die. Probably not though. Who knows who's here? Probably not goblins, because most of my family's Goliaths. Oh. Uh, I've never met a Goliath. Be what's really they like? nice. Be polite. I'm always they're, nice. They're, aren't they're I? brutish. Yes. Oh, all right. I was more referring to uh, <laughs> just like looks at Maraz. Looks at everyone. <laughs> just gestures vaguely at everyone. <laughs> uh, be be polite. They actually might really like Maraz because he lies a lot. But we'll see how it goes. I'm I'm getting better. You are get you are getting better. I'm I'm sorry. For getting better. I am excited to meet your family, uh, Pickles. I hope that your reunion is is better than mine likely will be yeah they're not they're a secretive bunch so i don't know how much they'll tell you uh it's a really big family um we're called uh and she like lowers her voice it's just like we're called oasis um so history check do i know anything about the oasis yeah you can make a history check is that a family surname or a title of some sort no, it's kind of just like the name of the family. So like my family's the Piccolianos, but like then there's the whole family. Uh, 16 for history. Adalia kind of lowers her voice. Pickles, are you involved in organized crime of some sort? No, it's just a family. 
It's just like you never had like a whole family. Like you don't have to be related to somebody to be related to somebody. No. Yeah, but I don't go to my family. That's for cold water. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could say it's just cold water. I don't. <laughs> it's just a cold glass of water. I do not know what is so. Uh, <laughs> Secretive about that. I mean, it's a delicious glass of cold water. Berg, no one orders water at our tavern here. Why not? Oasis, you say, Pickles. You say your family's name is Oasis. Yeah, uh, stop saying it out loud. place. I'm sorry. A, a place of shelter in the desert. In the desert, you see mirages. You know, that's why I took that name. Are you part uh, of my family? No, I'm Have you not told me this whole the, time? No, 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 no. Nothing like that, Pickles. I, You know my real name is Eugene. I took the name Miraz because I was not what I appeared. Much like sun patterns in the desert. It's just interesting how fate ties our, uh, our families and our really names weird. together. It is. Oh my god. By the way, Farrakh, Nora was part of Oasis, so... Wait, what? Oh, good thing that I uh, did not, uh... Yeah, which is engage. why I said stay away from her. Yeah, just... Yeah. No, you didn't need to tell me to, to not. She was, she was coming on too strong, certainly. She kind of reminds me of this bartender too, so like we should stay away from her. She was weird, but she's part of your family. But wasn't she a human? Yeah, I don't. That's oh my god, catch up, Maraz. It's it, you don't have to be family to be family. It's yeah, like okay. uh, yeah, like, like us. the resistance or us. Sure. Just like the resistance. Let's go with that. Okay. All right. Uh, Adalia has chugged her entire beer. Oh, good. That was fascinating. How do you feel? Oh, marvelous. It goes down much easier than the bathtub gin. Can I try some of that mulberry wine next? I'm getting up. I'm getting it. And <laughs> Farrick, like, pushes the whole <laughs> table out <laughs> and, like, stands up and, like, dances over to the bar um, to the... Uh, to uh what was her name monet monet is not there the uh there's another waitress there uh, a human blonde haired uh, somewhat middle-aged uh she is pouring drinks and things she politely greets you hello hello i would like uh two mulberry meads okay and, uh, let's just get three other shots of I don't know what's your what's your well tonight. Well, we just have a well, so well water. <laughs> well, no, not well water. <laughs> Though I hear that the cold glass of water is very popular here. Uh, oh God. I am looking for. <sighs> you, you just you want a cold glass of water? No, no, I want shots. <laughs> Give me shots of something cheap that burns. Uh oh, oh, we have. We have, we have dragon's milk. We have uh, tequila. We have. <laughs> I'll have tequila. I'll, I'll have tequila. Bring that over, please. Yeah. Tequila. Do tequila. you know? Do you know what tequila is? You seem confused when I say that. No. Tequila. Oh, it's. No, I it's, don't. I'm not confused. Okay. Well, in the Western lands, there's, you know, a man who has a herd of goats. And so he he, he he milks them, and these goats are magical, and when he milks them, tequila comes out. Oh, we, we, oh it's very God. rare. We need I don't want tequila. This. Never mind. Thank you. <laughs> he would love, absolutely love some tequila. Okay. No, and like Farrak is like out. banging on the table. <laughs> <laughs> She'll take out this bottle that has just like a goat's head on it and just will start pouring out tequila shots <laughs> and pass them to you on a tray. Um, while Farrick's at the bar, Adalia's going to kind of be like, um, who, who was this Nora you mentioned? Oh man, Nora. She was this horrible lady back in Farrington oh. who just loved Farrick, like loved Farrick. Oh. It was amazing. And to was be fair, Farrakh put the moves on Nora. That's true. That's true. Farrakh kind of started it. We cannot blame Nora. Literally, Farrakh pulled every trick in the book. Oh, 
Ferric like yells That's... from the bar. It's like <laughs> it's not my fault that I exude a sexual energy to beings. <laughs> it's not. I do not understand why. It's become a regular thing, actually. Like everybody likes Ferric. Ferric, you dance with her. <laughs> he he did put it to good use. It was so that I could erase all names from the the check-in book so that we could escape. Oh. I swear. Oh, yeah, we were doing it, some fucked up shit. Yeah, uh, don't hear that out loud, please. P- people either try to run me out of town because I'm a monster, or fuck me because I'm a monster. <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I drank another you're... drink after that sentence. <laughs> I don't think you're a monster. Great. Not you, perfect. too. <laughs> <laughs> Where are those shots? Uh, here you go. Straight Thank from you. the goat's teeth. Wonderful. <laughs> I must know what that's like. <laughs> Farrakh hands Adalia the uh, mulberry mead. Oh, uh, cheers. This you want to savor, and Farrakh cheers his ear. <laughs> oh, this is this is lovely. Even better than the beer, I think. How is the um t- tequila? How is the tequila, Carlos? <laughs> The tequila is uh, very much similar to the tequila of our world, except it is just cloudy, like milk. Gross. Um, Gross. I'm going to use pressure digitation, and it's just an actual slice of lime that I put uh, with my shot. Yeah. Wait, you you want he to press tequila into a lime? lime? No, I'm flavoring my pres- my tequila with pressure oh. digitation, which is just a slice of lime. So yes, okay. pulls out a lime. Makes so much. Sense. He just pulls the lime out of the bag. Oh, of I can't spells so while flavoring my drink I, with a lime. I was laughing because I was like, wait a minute, you can't create limes with pressure digitation. <laughs> Come on, man, flavor. No, without imagination. <laughs> flavor in so many ways, right there. Listen, we should make fun of Ambrose's pocket limes every time he drops one. Every time he pulls out a pocket lime. We can't keep bringing it up. It gets off. (laughs) So. I spent so much talk about Ambrose's pocket lime. The lime is there. The lime is there. You've had your drinks uh, for a time. Uh, It gets to the point where it's been probably about an hour or so of various talking. Anything else specifically happens, or yeah, I'm going to uh, ritual cast. What's that spell? Identify on my compass. Okay. Oh. Okay. Anything else? It. What's Christopher been doing? Has Christopher been drinking with us? That's a good question. Christopher has not been around. Where the fuck did the kid go? What? Where's the boy? Christopher has not been with you. We would have noticed if Christopher wasn't with us. <laughs> yeah, was he Just to be by? extremely clear. <laughs> I wouldn't have. For, <laughs> Let's be clear. Uh, he's the passive the 23 perception. <laughs> yeah. Just to be clear, Christopher did not go on the inn with you. Carlos, you can't just tell us that the <laughs> the NPC that are we've piloting been here just for disappeared. An hour and we <laughs> yeah, no, that's not how that works. If you're gonna disappear the invisible friend we have, you have to tell us. <laughs> uh, um. Okay. Well, yeah, Adalia would not have sat here in this inn for an hour if Christopher was missing. (laughs) Drinking goat tequila. Let us just say that Christopher has got up to use the outhouse and has not returned. Okay, Okay. that's fair. Okay, yeah, fine. Um, I'm going to cast Identify. Do you guys want me to look at all your other stuff? Um, Uh, Please, if you can look at my ring, I'm very curious exactly how it works. I want to be yeah, surprised the first time I punch somebody with these. Adalia will hand you her mirror, but don't you think Christopher's been gone an awfully long while? He's a big boy. Drink a lot of beer, though. He's probably making dingleberries. <laughs> he could be <laughs> showing them. <laughs> Give him ten minutes. If not, we'll look for him. I'm sure he's fine. Though, like, the last time he did this, he got locked up, so maybe not. Uh, yeah, well, I that is why I mentioned it. The last time Christopher was alone in a city, uh, Zeus did imprison him. I'll go check the bathroom. He's in Mornstead. This is not Northwatch. Um, I'll come with you, I think. Uh, Ambrose, are you done with the mirror? The mirror? Yeah, I handed you my mirror to identify. Oh, your mirror. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I can't identify on that. Sorry, I didn't realize what you had. Ferric throws their arm around Adalia and starts tromping off to find the <laughs> restroom and find our dear Christopher. As you exit uh, the end, you make your way to a couple of sets of outhouses. Uh, there is no more man, old man. No more ravings. It is returned to a normal street view. And as you approach the doors, uh, there are they're both closed. And so, what would you like to do? Farrakh tries to open the door for the first one. <laughs> Adalia will knock on the second one. The door flings open. Hey, what are you doing in here? Close the door. I'm trying to take a shit. Have you seen a, a, a boy? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Get out of here. <laughs> she tries to shut the door. <laughs> Get a goddamn man shit in peace. Well, that was rude. Ferrick, you shouldn't go knocking on, or you shouldn't be throwing open outhouse doors. Uh, but oh, Adalia is knocking knock on, on the bathroom door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it like explodes open. Uh, did anyone answer the knock on the second door? No. Then I'll open it. As you open the door, you get a really wonderful smell of bathroom. Uh, Perfect. But other than that, there's no Christopher. Damn it. All right. Well, um, I suppose we should tell the others then. Uh, I am going to look around. I'm just going to look around and see if there's any sort of indication that like something bad has gone down around here or you know like there was a scuffle or anything like that Farrakh will drop down onto all fours and start sniffing around uh, giving the help action sure it's an investigation probably okay if you're looking for signs of a struggle and things like that like the ground probably investigation okay okay uh dirty 20 yeah you look around do you see there's many foot tracks not a lot of signs of a scuffle but when you're looking around and Farrakh is on fours and people start to really look at you Farrakh when you're on all fours seemingly drawing some attention and nervousness uh, you uh, some middle aged probably 40s uh, man walks up to you and he says hey 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 you uh Hello? you looking for a guy named Christopher yes why do you know that yeah, he told me that two people would be coming looking for him in the outhouses. He told me to give you this hands a letter to you. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, I'll, I'll read the letter. Okay, bye. And he walks away. As you read the letter, you uh, basically just look it over real quick. It just basically says that Christopher has gone uh, to look for uh, friends in the city and that if you need uh, him... Uh, you can find him at Lucy's General Adventuring Store in the uh, Jeweled Quarter. What? What? This is very, very much like him, actually. I was going to say it is was it? unlike him. It's it's very much like him, yes. I don't like it. Last time he was left alone, it did not end well, in case you don't remember. Didn't your friend die trying to get him back? Farrakh is going to put their hands on Adalia's shoulders and pull them in close. Listen, when I entered this world and left my village, I was scared too. I was terrified. Yes. There's a lot going on. It's a lot to take in. It can be overwhelming. Yes, it can, but should we go after him, do you think? I... or, or not, I'm... The world is not all terror. There is joy in places like this. Really? Yes. All Look right. at how much fun we were having in the bar. Yes, we were having fun. I did enjoy the mead, by the way. Excellent recommendation. Good. All right, I suppose we we'll let him go then. He is a young boy, but, uh, you know, he is of that age. Where he needs some space. At his age, I was leading a resistance cell. Well, maybe you both need a little bit of a break. All right. Okay. I can have fun. It's possible, right? 
thwomp, I'm, I'm like sh- fucking Ferrick just pulls you in for a hug. <laughs> okay. Fun. Um, is met- meeting Pickle's family going to be fun, or should I prepare for a little bit of no fun? What do you think? I think that based on Pickle's, it will be no fun. I'd l- I think Pickle's is fun, but I... Uh- Agreed. At when asking Pickles about family, it gets a little uh, prickly. All right. Perhaps we can have some more meat after then. Yes. It's a promise and it's on me. <laughs> All right. Um, I suppose we should let the others know that Christopher is gone and that we don't mind, right? I'm sure it's fine. Every hey. time, everything. Uh, yes. What? Breathe. <sighs> All right, I'm fine. All right, let's go. I'm sure it's fine. Farrah kind of side eyes Adalia, like, mm-hmm. yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you think it's fine, sure. Uh, yep. And we'll go back in, I guess. <laughs> Adalia's trying very hard to seem like she's chill right now about Christopher being gone. Adalia, is everything okay? Oh, of, of course. You know, Christopher is a child of a certain age and he's gone off to have fun which is a thing I am told uh, people his age do and she'll like hand the uh, letter to everyone and she'll sit down and pick up her glass of meat again and and I'm sure it's fine and he didn't invite us you know he could have at least said something like if he just went hey guys I'm gonna go see my friends we would have been like okay Go ahead, Christopher. But like he just fucking's like, I'm gonna go to the bathroom with and sneaks away. What an asshole. I'm gonna stare deeply into this letter and even though I'm slightly drunk, try to <laughs> see if this is We've actually Christopher, shot when you Christopher guys writing. For. Yeah. <laughs> if this is actually Christopher's writing on this letter. I'm just upset he didn't invite us to go hang out with uh, his friends. That sounds like a good time. Mraz also being a little bit drunk is You want to go hang out with a bunch of teenagers? What a weird though. Yeah, we, Mraz I mean, without his like beard anymore is an 18 year old yes yeah, Mraz is like <laughs> practically the same yeah like, they're yeah. teenagers love that for you um, wait you're 18 <laughs> give me that beer <laughs> oh is there drinking a- consensual drinking age, age is 14 years old in oh <laughs> why do you know that that sounds about right <laughs> Give me that have beer back, the, what, what you, Have you thought through the legal okay, drinking Dad. age in Telthar? Well, we all die younger here, you know. Probably. Oh, God, <laughs> that's morbid. 30s. Well, that's reality. Probably all the fucking alcohol <laughs> they're drinking. Yeah. I mean, in the Middle Ages, people started drinking alcohol around 12. Yeah. Like, yeah. that was a regular thing. I'm yeah. an adult. Thank you. Uh, Maybe so for investigation. I'm responsible. I, my thing is, is that have you, you're trying to figure out if you, this is Christopher's handwriting. Yep, that's it. Yes. Have you ever seen Christopher's handwriting before? Has Kristen, uh, Christopher ever written anything in front of you? He's written in his book, right? But have you ever seen it, is my question. I mean, I probably would have. It's not like I'm, like, you've seen people write before. You don't pay, like, insane amount of attention to it, but you have seen other people write. Totally fair. They are right. Um, you definitely know this is Christopher's handwriting. I just toss it over. Hmm? I don't care. And I keep on sipping on my beer. Now that he can make <laughs> his good berries, he doesn't need us anymore. Fucking oh, he's fine. Kid. It's not personal. It just yeah, goes to off to his fair, party and doesn't invite all of us. To be fair, my family would not have liked us. him. Yeah, they would not have liked him at all. Well, so, um, it's probably for the best. He's had a very difficult few days, I think. Perhaps he needed to blow off some steam. Is that I, the correct term? We, uh, it is, but we all have. I would I would be down to a party. I think the term you're looking for is masturbate. Oh. Well. <laughs> that that too, I suppose. pretty funny. We actually, we should, after, after I mean, he could actually be oh, seeing we'll his friends. Do I don't think masturbation would be a letter worthy <laughs> of writing. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on... Oh my. Never mind. Um, I don't mean to be interjective as Monet walks up to the table. Uh, I don't mean to be uh, interrupting your masturbation talk, uh, but <laughs> the water bearers have been waiting. Thank you, Monet. Excuse me for my friends. Uh, we will. Should we just go? Just go back? Do, like up? Where, yes. where are we going? 
Okay. Just, you can follow me if you wish. Okay. Pickles is going to pop up. She's going to take off her cloak, put it in her bag. So, like, wipe down, make sure she looks nice and has no crumbs, and off she'll go. And this is probably the first time, like, anybody has actually, like, fully seen Pickles outside of her cloak, because she, like, lives in that thing. I was just going to say, mm-hmm. what does Pickles wear when she's not drowning in her cloak? Well, we just bought new clothes, so. Oh, um, <laughs> so did we. <laughs> um, she's probably usually got on, like, basically like a tube top made out of like ripped fabric love that and just some like basic leather pants um which has a hole because she has a tail which nobody really knew before oh she's and a it's tail. adorable and what fluffy kind of yeah tail? it's like a little bunny t- it's like a little <gasps> bunny tail i love that <laughs> i've never noticed that ever no nope, nobody's noticed um nobody talks about our tails pickles you have a tail Beric, you have a tail whereas you, you have definitely seen this before oh i knew that <laughs> I'm sure you did. Um, <laughs> all right, let's go meet Pickle's family, the water bears. Okay. As you approach um, behind the barn in the curtain flap, you walk through, uh, entering a mostly candlelit room with various tables of finer quality. Uh, they're essentially where multiple various figures of uh, some humans but a lot of goliaths are in this room drinking somberly talking and at the far end the middle stands a large chair a large almost throne think high-end backed victorian style chair you see a goliath who is probably younger uh, Maybe a uh, younger for a Goliath. You see that he is adorned with various jewels, uh, various uh, pieces of accessories that would befit someone of high rank. And you also see that he has various tattoos befitting that of a Goliath as well. You see that he has daggers all along his body, just multiple daggers on. Sleeves, vests, he seems to be all daggered out, as it were. He sits on this chair. As everyone walks through the room, they all stop talking and they stare at all of you. As Monet walks you to the front, you see the Goliath hail and say, Welcome home, sister, as he'll say to you, Pickles. Good to see you. Which brother is this? This is... You would know this as your brother, uh, Kiorin, or the dagger, as you would. Yeah, my oldest brother. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. You all see Pickles stiffen a bit. Oh, uh, hey, bro. What are you doing here? (laughs) I'm just sitting around. What are you doing here is the real question. I mean, I'm traveling around and doing my job, you know, and we just happen to be in Morstead, and I haven't checked in in a while, so I figured I should. I was trying to get a message back home to father, but you're here. Huh. Yeah, just watching the place for a while. So, um, that's it, huh? Just come to say hey, nothing you need? I mean, there's not, not really anything I need. I just, like... I don't know if you heard, there's like a dragon going around, uh, and it might or might not have been my fault, uh, and uh, father's probably pissed, so, you know, kind of, yeah. Hmm. Yes, you're right, uh, had some interesting news from Farrington up the way. One of our friends saw you. Yeah, fuck Nora. You should just... We should get rid of her. <laughs> Let's be reasonable. Provides good information. But I am rude. Steps back in his chair. Oh, yeah. I should probably introduce my friends, huh? Hmm. Who are you? Uh, Maraz the Magnificent. I'm Ambrose <laughs> Boussant. <laughs> Ambrose Boussant. That's right. Hmm. Maraz the who? Maraz the Magnificent, Wizard Extraordinaire. His name is Eugene. Never heard of you. Oh, that's boring. <laughs> that's what and, I said. Uh, 
That's what everyone says. <laughs> Who is your friend here? I am Idolia Rowan. I hail from Northwatch. And I'm Farrick of the Kiln. Hmm. Interesting. Pretty cool, right? No, but if you're what? doing your job, what? it's not very interesting to me. Everybody, this is my older bro, the dagger. He's kind of a stick in the mud. The dagger? Yes. I get my name for my adeptness with the blade. Daggers. Oh. To be specific. Mm. How uh, original. I'm going to look around the office. Farrick laughs, like, <laughs> out loud. <laughs> Adalia winks at him. Nichols glares at you. The dagger says nothing. It stares. I'm going to look around the office and see if there's any, like, old blood that's been spilled before, <laughs> like, in the in the front of this desk, like, chair. Like, look at the carpet, see if there's, like, you know, some old stained blood that's been washed multiple times. Sure. Make an investigation check. Adalia also meets that glare. Just... That 20! Oh! Oof! <laughs> Ambrose! Oh, nice, nice, nice. You notice that there is a tad hint of dark coloring around where you stand. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, the dagger, it was very nice to meet you. Um, unfortunately, we have a very important meeting. I think we should go soon. What? No, we don't. Mm. I thought this was our important meeting. Ambrose, we can't be so rude. The dagger. Oh, also, yes. brother, I got like five pounds of drugs in my bag, so we got to do something about that. Pickles, this is not a great time to discuss that. This is exactly the time. There's a lot going on with you five, I imagine. So, I know some interesting things. I've heard some interesting things. Father's not here. Good. Sorry, go ahead. Just didn't know if rumors are true. Well, you, you gotta tell them for us to tell you if they're true. I will. Absolutely. I'm curious, though. Why are you traveling with the son of the Ivory God? So... There's a story, right? I went to a carnival, I got drugged, I woke up in a dream, and he was there. And now we're friends. That's that's the story. It was exactly like that. I know it's unbelievable. Oh, if that's all you really want, then you can go. Nothing's stopping you. Well, I mean, I, yeah, what? How, how's the family? How's, how's Rocco? How's Nico? How's Luca? Like, how's everybody doing? How's Ma? Ma's good. Nico's good. And what of these rumors that you've heard? Oh, yeah. You can't just send us out without telling us the rumors. Well, I did hear the rumor that you were responsible for Farrington. Is that true? Oh, yeah, that's what I started with. So, 100%. We, we are responsible people. I've never been to Farrington. Indeed. I heard you may have caused quite a bit of chaos in Northwatch. Northwatch could use a little chaos. Yeah, we're planning on destroying the whole place. Mm. I also heard that the unsavory news that Lord Commander Zeus is on his way. Yeah. yeah. On his way to Mornstead? Mm-hmm. Zeus has not left Northwatch in decades. Where do you get your information? We are the ones who gather the information. We don't get our information from anywhere besides us. Then you have family in Northwatch. We have family everywhere. I drop a hundred gold on his desk. I told you. Hmm. <laughs> money. My dear that sister. Pickles. I know I didn't I didn't explain it to him. But if you want, I would play you a game for it. No. But thank you. Yes. It can't be you, dear sister. It has to be someone else. Oh, what kind of game are we talking about? Game of chance. Luck. Skill, bravery. Can I insight check this guy to see if, like, this smarmy nonsense is him, like, covering something up? Or is he just an asshole? (laughs) Uh, you can make an insight check, sure. Like, I'm not really, is he lying or not? Just, like, is this just him being like, oh, well, that was an at one, so I don't know anything. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, he's generally, he's feeling you out. That's for sure. Dagger, I will play a game with you as long as it's, it doesn't involve, like, slitting throats or anything of that nature. I glance at Pickles, trying to gauge if I'm being wise or not. 
<laughs> Pickle's watching an amusement right now. <laughs> no. No, just throat slitting. Stands up. He's Goliath height, so he is tall, like seven feet tall, muscular bound. And the room is silent as he stands. He walks over to the nearest table. He sits down. People clear the way, and they turn towards the table. He bades you to sit with a hand. Please. I'll go over. Pickles, I, I see the resemblance. This guy's enormous. And then I'll go over and yeah, sit right? down next, or across from him. He's also an asshole, but like that's okay. Don't tell him I said that. He'll get real mad. I'll sit down across from him. Mraz, you're gonna get stabbed. Game of chance, luck, and skill. We call this point of truth. I have truth, and you have truth. Is this so? Uh, yes. Hmm. I bet my truth for your truth, and whoever wins gets to hear the truth of the other. Pulls out a dagger. You'll take your hand. Wait, why Why are daggers needed for this? Pulls one out, gives it to you. I've got you, friend. It's simple. I have my dagger, you have your dagger. I will tell you to go, and you'll begin stabbing between your fingers and back and forth until I tell you to stop. And then when it is your turn, you will do the same with me. Command me to go in and out, and stab between my fingers until you tell me to stop. Whoever st- gets stabbed first wins. Loses, I should say. We used to play this as kids. Now, how do I know that you will ever tell me to stop? I promise you have my word. All right. Okay. Now, does the stabbing come before or after the true thing? Stabbing comes after, but before the true. Uh, yeah, the stabbing comes before the true thing. Not that I'm not we're playing the game. You understand? Then once you are in pain and writhing, then you tell your truth. <laughs> I see truth from pain. Yes. Yes. Very one well. Let's caveat. do this. Oh, Just great. One more caveat. Okay. Pulls out a soft silk linen shake like basically handkerchief hands it to you he pulls out another one blindfolded blind oh okay all right let's do this i'm ready my hand is in my face just like wow you're so stupid <laughs> really good. no need for this you know i thought that my family would like miraz they really do uh i'm going to i've been standing in the back near ferric sort of shaking my head at this nonsense but I'll walk forward and uh, put a hand on Miraz's shoulder. Good luck. And cast guidance. Thank you, Adolia. As the one who issued the challenge to you, I will allow you to choose who goes first. Um, if, if I do the dagger between my fingers first, does that mean that I also have to truth first? No, you, the truth comes if you lose, you stab yourself. We don't tell the truth. Initially, I uh, I will go first. Okay. Dang it! I'm checking all of my debuff spells, and they require me to see. <laughs> go ahead and blind for yourself. Pickles just wh- whispers over to Ambrose, and just be like, "For two people who are really good at lying, it makes me f- fucking laugh that they're playing a game of truth." This is gonna be a nightmare. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be so great. Raz, once you blind for yourself, I need you to make me a sleight of hand check to see how well you do. Oh no, my boy. Nice, sleight of hand, okay. Uh, do I have, like, d- disadvantage from being blindfolded, or is it just straight? I just do it for you straight. Okay. And guidance is a d4, right? Uh, d4. Okay. Alright, let's see. Oh boy. <laughs> oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> that is a 27. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Nice, nice, nice. I have expertise in sleight of hand. Oh my god. As you begin the game, many people stand and they walk over to you as they start to intensely focus on you, Miraz, as you take the dagger and you just begin slowly putting it in. It's, it's a little clunky at first, but after you get the rhythms, you eventually learn a pattern. And you go at a, a good, soft pace. You're not going crazy. Yeah, I imagine the first couple rounds are the toughest because it's like weighted for a Goliath, and so I'm trying to get used to it. Like, five finger fillet is probably something Miraz has like played before, but he might have played it with like a butter knife instead of an actual dagger. Mm-hmm. After a few seconds, stop, as the dagger will tell you. You've successfully not stabbed yourself. 
Yep, I'll stop. I'll twirl the dagger between my fingers. Excellent. So people, they ooh and ah, and they begin to clap. Also, too, while uh, that is going on, Pickles, a few of some random uh, members of your family come and they greet you just randomly while this happens. Some unnamed, some named eventually, uh, but no one you recognize in your immediate, like, close circle. I guess it's my turn then. He'll blindfold himself. I guess so. And then he'll begin. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> stabbed! Suck a butt! <laughs> you done got stabbed. Uh, with a three, um, plus his sleight of hand of eight. Um, unfortunately, it's not enough. He does prick himself with the skill if he has. It's somewhat hard to believe that he does. He just gets the tip, just a little bit of the side of his pinky. He kind of stops. <sighs> oh, it's like, oh. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Dagger. I'm sure you'll recover. If anybody looks at Pickles, she is suddenly terrified. <laughs> well, interestingly enough, I could give you the truth or go for double up if you wish. Double up as in two truths against... I'll, I'll take one truth for now. I wasn't speaking of truth. Money where the mouth is, so to speak. Or at least something that would interest you. Oh, um... Perhaps later. Right, uh, right now, I, I want an answer to a question. Very well. Ask your question. How soon will Zeus arrive in Mondstadt, given your best intelligence? Hard to say. At this rate, once I heard the news, I would say less than two days. Shit. Oh boy, alright. I suppose you're done. Someone of your stature probably does not have the stomach to continue on, unfortunately. Oh, I can go for another round. I'm, I'm not the one that pricked his, fink, his pinky. <laughs> Indeed. And Pickles and everyone will see his eye somewhat twitch. But he keeps the calm demeanor on. All right. Your turn, please. Uh, 24. Damn. Okay. Awesome. And then you'll again see Moran's just... The dagger will go in between your fingers effortlessly. And you this time you get some applause... Uh, as the dagger says, stop. I'll stop. Knife's in your hand, ball's in your court. Indeed. Puts the blindfold back on. Farrick will whisper a spell and cast silvery barbs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, 13 plus 8. Uh, as you Damn. see... Dagger, effortlessly, he sort of stops maybe a half second late as your spell hits, and but continues on until Moraz tells him to stop. Okay, stop. He stops. Neither of us got pricked that time. Does that mean we both uh, belay some information? <laughs> we continue, unless Very you well. want to chicken out. No, in fact, uh, 20 gold says that you'll uh, <laughs> ding yourself again on this next round before me. <laughs> <laughs> As oh, you wish, may I man. get in on that bet? Uh, certainly. Um, Adalia I, will. I glance at Pickles when she says that. I'm like trying to gauge if uh, if I'm fitting in well or if I'm. The dagger holds out the hand and says, "Betting can be done on the side. This is between us. You understand." Not really. But continue with your game. Am I noticing that dagger is getting like? more irritated, like he's about to lose control at any moment. Oh, you mean like the actual, da- like the person, the dagger. See, that's funny. Yes, the dagger. Um, yes. Uh, that's what happens when they're named the same. Yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, not exactly. Um, <laughs> make an insight check. Okay. Not 20? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Gross. 26? Gross, like, I don't trust your family at all. Two net 20. It's tense. Uh... It's tense. It's tense. Okay. It's tense. He's. Uh, is, is it like this man is going to stab Raz? Uh, no, not that kind of tense. It's okay. Just, that's it's just like a tense about, air. Like, it's okay. like the parents are arguing, like in the other room. Oh, no. Tense. Um. Um. I'm gonna just put my hand on my holster, very like nonchalantly, just like I'm just kind of like resting, but like 
really focusing on his hand, like if he just like tries to reach out to like Maraz or anything, just to protect him. Pickles is gonna go stand behind her brother. What kind of floor is there in here? Is it like cobblestone or wood? It's the same familiar stone floor that happens. Okay. Um, Monet will walk up to Farrick and will say, <laughs> "So, have you been? Have you been here long?" <laughs> <laughs> no, we just rolled in today. Interesting. Oh, um, Monet, could I get another glass of that mulberry mead, please? Thank you. I'm trying Absolutely. to get her to the bars leave o- The bar's over there. <laughs> the the, the <laughs> awkward tension. <laughs> As, uh, Maraz, uh, go ahead and, uh, it was his turn, so he gestures towards you. Go on. All right, uh, 20 gold to whoever wins this one. Oh, Did Fair give Katie. him his advantage from Silvery Barbs? Yeah, that's that's what I was just about to say, is now, uh, now Mirage has the advantage here. Thanks. Okay. That is a 17 mm. even with advantage. Losing mm. my touch a little. It's the weight of the Goliath dagger. Like, I'm used to a lighter <laughs> blade than this. As you continue blindfolded, it's getting heavier and as you speed up, it almost hits, you feel the side of your ring finger, and finally stop, okay? All right, hmm. your turn. Indeed. <sighs> Cracks his knuckles as he goes. Um, I would like to use Mold Earth, which is purely somatic, so there's no verbal components or anything like that, to try to, when he's uh, doing the dagger, to try to uh, sort of destabilize the ground under his chair a little bit and give him disadvantage. Okay. Um, and you're trying to do that stealthily, I assume? Uh, well, I it is stealthy because it's just somatic comp- components. There's no verbal or anything else. So it's just, I've got my hands in my pockets, but I can roll a stealth check if you'd like. No, you don't need to. Uh, and know how like stealthy you're trying to be if it's hands in pockets that's fine hands in pockets no one's really no one's really watching you okay um and uh, I apologize you're trying to make sure he has disadvantage on that roll Is that yeah correct? okay basically Go trying to roll. wobble his chair when he's stabbing his hand okay damn he appreciate the effort continue on inch by inch he continues to speed up and he seems to be speeding up in a way that he is not letting on how good at this he is. It seems as his skill the daggers is very good. Yeah. <sighs> well, this was boring. I feel like I've given you enough information and... Yeah, let's just let's I'm... just stop. <laughs> it's fun playing with you. Likewise, we should do this again sometime. I take my blindfold off. Hmm. Well, sister, mm. I'm afraid it's time for you to be going. Well, with your friends at least. Yeah, I agree. I, I think we should leave. I think now's the, the right time to leave. Uh, tell Dad I'm doing fine. Sorry about the dragon. I've learned a lot of runes. I'm probably stronger than you now because you're a fucking wimp. And, uh, yeah. If you know what I should do with these drugs, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep them. That's a rundown. Leave the drugs here. I knew you'd say that. And she'll leave most of the drugs. Well, before you go, sister. Yeah. You know I love you. Yeah, I know I love you too. He'll pull in closer to you. Hmm? Rumor is, there's a bounty high for your heads. Zeus has put a bounty on. Shit. Zeus has had a bounty on my head since I was 15 years old. I'm still here. How much was that bounty? Money has little use in war, at least to those of us who do not spend it sitting in back rooms and playing games. While hell comes to beat down your door. Idalia, this is Marnstead. They got the best bounty hunters in this city. <laughs> no one's caught me yet. Is your prize has it been 10,000 gold? Shit. Per Each? person? Shit. Any amount of money in Northwatch is as valuable as 10,000 gold. You're not in Northwatch. Well, no, I'm you not. do with that as you wish. Adalia's already leaving the room, but she would like to try to mold Earth underneath um, Monet's feet to trip her up while she's and make her look silly <laughs> while she's hitting on Farrick. So Farrick, I 
I love your jewels and your beads. They're so lovely. Do you Thank accessorize you. yourself? Of course. This is my friend who uh, died when I was re- really little. Uh, this was like a little brooch that he wore um, when he fell off of a cliff and I was there for his funeral and I took that and now that's on me. And this one is for my friend Spunk. He just recently died. Uh, he died like yesterday. Um, um, so, Ferric, she calls yes? from the door. Uh, would you buy me another of those meats? Of course. And Actually, Ferric, guys, I like, think it's time for us to leave. their way over towards <laughs> We're the on our way the out. The mold earth uh, catches her and she falls uh, a little bit. Uh, she's falling towards you, Ferric. What do you do? I catch her. <laughs> Naturally. She looks up. Ah, oh, thank you. I appreciate that, friend. You should really be careful. You don't want to fall on your face. Depends where I fall. Link. All right. As... All right. I think we should leave now. Uh, <laughs> Adalia has like, Very well like red <laughs> glittering in her uh, tattoos. Like she's thinking about firing some a firebolt at this <laughs> oh. lady. That's funny. Pickles That's is funny. gonna like run over and like Wait, give her brother check. a hug. Is Adalia jealous? What? <laughs> oh. That's what I'm picking up. She is. It's like check on that one. Seems like Adalia's jealous. Is Adalia twenty five? Is Adalia jealous? <laughs> Why am I uh, falling so Are you trying to hide Ooh, anything, 16. Adalia? No, I'm not trying to be stealthy about it. Net twenty. Yeah. Net twenty. <laughs> Yo. Is Adalia jealous? <laughs> Just tell me. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, she's not even really being subtle about it. <laughs> Damn, alright. Ooh, dang. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. So, Farrick. Pickles is gonna run over and give her brother a hug, but whether he wants it or not. He'll just stand uh, there, but he'll you kind got, of you take gotta your hug head back. And... I'm not gonna let go until you hug me back. It's true, she's done this to me before. He'll a hug back. Don't fight me in this. You know I'll win. I'm stronger than you. You seem like it. Tell your friend next time they don't need magic to win. Yeah, I know. I saw that. Thank you for not stabbing them. Uh, put in a good word with father and the family. I'd really like my name soon. Kind of getting tired of pickles. Uh, <laughs> Something tells please. me you might get it someday. Yeah. And get out of here. All right. All right. Also, kill that bartender. <laughs> she just runs out of the room. <laughs> Confused, obviously. You all leave the dimly lit room as the people watch and stare. Dagger sits back on the main chair, and you are once again in the tavern room of the Black Rose Inn. Well, what would you like to do next? Guys, we didn't die. That was successful. Uh, Pickles, what was that? What, what, what happened what? in there? I'm so confused. You played a game? He liked yes. you, I think. Yeah. Well, that's good. Uh, I couldn't tell. He, he, he knew that you guys used magic, so he wasn't super yeah, impressed. Yeah, it was really obvious. But like, uh, I, I mean, up until you. recently, I couldn't do any magic, and so I'm trying to figure out, you know, what I can and can't do now. That's true. I don't... Yeah, I mean, obviously, he didn't know that. So that was my brother. Uh, he's really important. Not quite as important as Rocco, but he won't say that. Uh, but, yeah. I just wanted to say hi. Okay, I thought thought there might be, like, some something more than just, like, saying hi. That's <laughs> what I thought, but that's alright. Well, no, you know, like, I'm going on, like, I've been, you know, I'm working for the runes. I'm looking and I'm doing the research, so I kind of just yes. had to check in. And I didn't tell him about the okay. runes, because it's none of his goddamn business. That's right. Does your brother sure. understand the... The threat that Zeus poses. Oh, I am sure he does. And he still speaks in riddles and drinks in a tavern and plays games with those he looks down upon. Have you met me? I mean, he's my brother. I, I have I mean, met you, me and I'm... you have always stood up against the evils we have encountered. You haven't sat aside. I like roll my eyes and open up the door and walk through. <laughs> Well, cor- correct me if I'm wrong, Pickles, but the your your family will find a way to survive and thrive regardless of who's really in power, right? Oh, hundred percent. Or who's like officially they in power, right? They get involved without getting involved. 
Yes, that, that was the sense. I don't know. They won't tell me really any more than that. So I don't really know what they do. I just listen. Uh, Ambrose, did you, like, leave the inn altogether? Yeah, because I told you guys okay. I wanted to leave. <laughs> Alright, I... Let, let's keep conversing, but let's follow Ambrose. I, I don't want to split off any more than we, we already have with... more wine. Okay. I mean, let's go crash Christopher's party and tell him that he should have invited us to whatever he's doing. Oh my god. Mraz, how are you so good with daggers? Oh, I... It's like, like, it's like you've played that game before. I Did you grow up playing that game, that game too? Oh my god. A little bit, yeah. I called it, I called it Five Finger Filet. I think he called it something a little bit different. I can't remember. But, um, no, I mean, when I, I mean, I, I was a bit of a miscreant in the streets, especially in the cop recorder, where I, where law enforcement was a little bit less strict. Uh, yeah, I've, you know, I've cut a few purses in my day. I'm not too fond of it. I try to live an honest living as a fake, not, no longer fake wizard now, but <laughs> regardless. Yeah, everybody. Mraz learned magic from telling the truth. Super really? awesome. Yeah. I, I yep. told a dragon to stop, and it stopped. And that was that was after I finally expressed that I couldn't really do any magic. So I'm right, pretty excited about that. He admitted he's been lying this whole time, and then suddenly he could do magic. That's super cool. You want consent? I open up the door again. Guys? Yes, let's we go. Let's go. Let's follow Ambrose. is literally coming. Can we please right, go? Right, we've got to do something. Yes. Let's go talk to Ambrose's uh, ivory god. My family can wait. They're just family. Your brother didn't seem to like your family, Ambrose. I'm a boo aunt. No shit. <laughs> okay. Just as, as long as we're on the same page. All right, let's go. I'm assuming your family does a ton of crime, so they probably don't like that <laughs> regard whatsoever. I, I don't think they do any crime. Andy, you dropped drugs. Andy? Who? Who's Andy? Oh, Andy. <laughs> oh, Who's oh, that? What? Sorry, I saw her name in the corner. Pickles. Pickles, you dropped drugs after a meeting with your brother. Oh, well, yeah, I had to get rid of him. He's going to yeah. get rid of him. They're definitely doing crime. Thank you. That's okay, though. No, they're not doing crime. No, they're good. Regardless, we should go talk to Ambrose's there family. Blood this, on the this is urgent. It's probably from stabbing fingers. It happens. That was a lot Let's of go blood. talk to your family, Ambrose. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Zayus is coming. You're, you're right about that. Yeah, you're right. We should deal with the evil man. They're not my super good, nice family. All right. Yeah, they weren't bad. I was expecting them to be a little bit... Uh, meaner. I enjoyed them. I'd like to see them again. Awesome. We'll find them again, I'm sure. At this point, as you walk outside the Black Rose Inn, the streets have lessened in terms of main flow traffic as the sun at this point is reaching the point where it's going to start to set. Um, And you see that the people are walking about still some wares being sold, still some people moving in and trying to get home or get to a place that they need to be, but it's less busy, as it were. You're going to where now? The Jeweled Quarter. Ambrose's family, I think. Yeah. Jeweled Quarter for Christopher and Ambrose's family. Okay. As you begin moving towards the Jeweled Quarter, Ambrose, you would know the way, so you would easily lead your friends uh, towards uh, that area of the city. As you move more towards the Jeweled Quarter, you notice that the buildings start to very much so get much more uh, exquisite, nicer, more expensive, as the averageness and the mundaneness of the architecture becomes more exquisite, becomes more flared. Uh, This is definitely the signs that you are closing in on the Jeweled Quarter. As you approach Ambrose, the and crew, the entrance of the Jeweled Quarter. It is normally open, but for some reason, the gate entering in is closed. And as you see two very much heavily armored uh, soldiers, almost looking um, like religious warriors, uh, they are decked out in plate mail. They have uh, the symbol of Vespa on their chest and their helmets are that of uh, a white ivory. Uh, Ambrose, you would recognize this as a member of the Ivory Guard. They are guarding the front. They look at you and they say, What is it? What can I do you for? Why are you approaching? I reach into my chest under my robe, pull out my, my cloak, I pull out my symbol, my specific, like, boussant, uh 
symbol of Vespa. Open up the gate. I look at it. Hmm. Open the gate! As the gate will pull open vertically, and he gives a nod. Welcome home, friend. Thank you. And I like... It's almost like a bow, but also... But it's like a praying bow at the same time. He gestures in a similar way, but not as deep, half-heartedly, even. I look at everyone, and follow. Okay. You make your way past the buildings in the jeweled corner. You immediately notice that the streets no longer are a dirt or even a brown stone. These streets are centrally well-paved, even some in seem encrusted or hand-carved. Uh, there are very few uh, low-born, very few dirty people, like homeless, or uh, and what I mean by that is there's someone, you know, there's no one that looks as though they have are begging or anything of that nature. Hard workers, blue-collar workers, these are all religious folk and or nobles, with noble cloaks, noble works, and a very much a giving off a better-than-thou air about them. Eventually, Ambrose, you lead the party to what you would recognize as the headquarters of the Ivory Guard. You see the beautiful carved uh, stone. It's two stories, more elongated than squared over a rectangle. Uh, you see there are multiple Ivory Guardsmen posted on each side. The flags of the Ivory Guard, the, the, the beautiful deep purple with white Vespa symbol, uh, a flag that hangs uh, pardoned between each uh, stone pillar is in front of the headquarters. What happens? What do you do? You guys okay coming? Oh yeah, of course. You thought my family's weird because I had to ask for water and go into a back room. You had a show badge and you have a fucking palace of a house. Whatever this is. Yeah, my family's weird. Wait, that's your fucking house? You live there. Oh no, this is no, no, no. This is this is the Ivory Guard headquarters. Uh, uh, yeah. It's oh, still no, super, no, no. way too fancy. No, this, my house is actually bigger than this one. Than, and, but, wait, what? What? Sorry, yes, my say house that is again? actually bigger than this one. What? It has like three floors. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can't judge my family. What the fuck? And I wasn't judging your family. On, only your family lives there. No, we, uh, usually the first floor and second floor we house the sick and run, oh. you know, a lot of duties, actually, but I'll talk more about it. And I just Resident, open up the headquarters. Here too? <laughs> Not here, here, no. I grew up in the Silver Quarter. Oh, okay. Is your house this big? No. Okay, good. No, this is, this reminds me of the temple in Farrington. Yeah, I don't like this, but all right, we'll go. If anybody tries to offer me something to drink, though, I'm not doing it. Uh, that that makes sense. Look, I Pickles, I, I trust you, and I trust your interactions with your family. I feel the same about Ambrose and uh, his family. Yeah, as long as you guys don't talk about some weird religions or dark entities, it's all good. So what's what's a weird would ever religion? Do uh, anything from Ortimal. What about um, you, like the master? The, that guy right, can right, sound right, right. super convincing. All right, don't talk about him. Okay. Mm, yes. Just be normal. Excellent. After you, we'll follow your lead. If there's any daggers, give them to Marats. Uh, I'll open up the door. As the guards see you and they allow you to pass, the doors open with a large thud as the stone doors move inward. You see a grand hall uh, with uh, <laughs> ivory staircases uh, that sheen and glimmer as if freshly waxed. Its staircase goes up to the second floor in a large spiral uh, mansion-esque staircase you see the tapestries the different paintings of great scenes of the ivory guard of demons being quenched and monsters being slain and you see the fires and the burning houses as you see the ivory guardsmen in these grand these grand tapestries these grand paintings and the flags of the guard hanging off the ceiling and as you enter down the staircase is a rather tall, heavily armored man. He has a commander's cloak on. He seems to be giving off an air of command and presence. Uh, his skin dark, his hair uh, shaven, but with a soft beard. 
his eyes piercing, and he looks and comes down the stairs. Ambrose? Commander Boussant? <gasps> Who are your friends here? This is Pickles, Farrick, and Dahlia, Commander. and Mraz. Hello. Farrick bows. I have urgent news. He bows. He looks at all of you and says, My name is Isaac Boussant. You have a lot of explaining to do. And that's where we'll end tonight's session. Well, we're in trouble. So much backstory. (laughs) Yeah, we had fun for like half an hour there, though. (laughs) Well, thanks so much for everyone for tuning in. We love you. Hey, if you love what you hear, go ahead and check us out on all the social medias, the Homebrew Network on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we are all combined with our sister shows, and it's awesome because now you can see all our cool content everywhere. It's everywhere. It's amazing. Also, too, you can check out our Patreon if you love what you hear and you would love to throw some money at us. Uh, it would be so amazing because we do this for you but we understand uh, if you can't contribute but that's okay if you can two dollars is just enough to get you right on there it gets you some sweet sweet content you get to hear about our after show power word chill where we get to talk about all the ways that i kill my pcs apparently and also just all <laughs> the goody gossip uh so check that out as well if you're also listening you of course you're listening of course you are uh you're on spotify uh google podcast whatever leave us some stars leave us a review that really helps us out a lot and just we love the love you know we love just hearing what you have to say cool care chart all that stuff keep it coming we love it um and just some great news uh uh you know a couple weeks uh ago I talked about my friend uh seth who was diagnosed with colon cancer listeners and um, he had surgery to remove uh, part of his colon and the cancer and all so far so good it seems as though he is cancer free uh so he might has a long road ahead of course but uh and it's great just want to let everyone know and seth love you dude Uh, i'm glad you're fighting the fight uh listener just want to let you know as well that you're loved you're important and you matter join us next time on power word fail Goodbye. Bye.